One, two, three, four, five, six, I think I can see, or maybe even seven. There's a nice big grouping of them. And these are the ones that we do sometimes see all the way down on Philemon's cut line as well. So they move around quite a bit. And that's a younger bird. You can see its facial skin is a sort of red color but there's a little bit of yellow in there now that is an indication of a younger bird so a bird that's probably about three years old whereas the one on the left hand side where it's going to walking towards there is a bright red throat patch and that indicates a adult the one in the background there but you see how they're just walking through and picking with these long beaks looking for any signs of insects that are now completely exposed by the lack of vegetation in this area it makes hunting for these guys so much easier when they have these burnt sections and very common to see hornbills where it's burnt trying to find food this is very cool also that they're so relaxed with us so you find a situation where they spend a lot of time moving away from us but I know Taylor's spent time with them Ali's been spending time with them and I've spent a bit of time and it seems as though they're getting more and more used to the cars being around and they're not just flying away when we come around which is great because it's allowing us these beautiful views at one of the birds that looks probably the most prehistoric of our birds out here the long big beak and those big long legs and they move around all the time and they seem to always be busy with something now the interesting part is going to be to see whether or not we see any gifting from the male to the female because sometimes what you'll find is the males will get into these sections and they'll pick up bits of food and and insects and those kind of things and then they'll go gift it to the female and to try and earn favor with the female so it's a lot, a lot like some humans really that try and kind of bribe the females with all kinds of shopping items and so our hornbills are very similar I want to just go up a little bit to these guys that are up ahead here so Mary you say these birds are cool they are some of my favorite birds in terms of just watching their antics and watching what they get up to in the Kruger Park they're an interesting one because unfortunately people have fed them and they actually become a bit of a pest in the crew then they come right up to the cars and they almost peck at the cars begging for food which is not good but they are super interesting I always like watching them and like I say the social dynamic of them they're one of those birds that is quite a tight-knit social unit and you'll find that they all look after each other and the fact that they gift to the female as a male it's just a very interesting way of going about things I wonder if they're going to settle up there I see that a lot of them have now flown off into a dead tree Let's go back rather. Rochelle, you're asking if how we tell if a bird is male or female. Now, Rochelle, as soon as I get settled again, I'm going to show you quickly in my book because basically there is a difference in the color of the skin on the throat. So you'll find that they have these red, red, red colors, and that is the male, and the purple, and I mean the female will get a little kind of purple bleeding into that red. So I'm going to show you now what I'm talking about. And while I try to find that, Craig's going to show you the actual birds themselves. So there's that little young one that we saw just now coming past us. Okay. All right, so that one will eventually come of age and it will get what I'm talking about. So here we go. Here is our ground hornbills. There is the male over there. You see he's got very red throat skin and then around the eye is all red but no sign of any purple bleeding into that. Whereas if you look at the female, there you see that purple patch coming through the red and you'll find it's very variable. Sometimes it will be a thin linear line like what you see there. Sometimes it almost looks like a delta from the air where it seeps into different parts and it's got these small sort of vascular um, structure around that red so it just depends on the individual but that's how you tell male and female apart within the ground hornbills very cool birds and I can see they're slowly coming back down there's some that are still hunting up at the top and then there's this young one that's close to us and then one or two that have gone up into trees and are just busy grooming themselves so they spread out quite a bit and it's very typical of them to spread out like this when they are hunting You'll find a situation where they kind of get used to the fact that they're all over the place and they'll each have their own quadrant where they can then afford to find food and they don't get on top of one another and steal from each other. 
What is quite funny is when you find an adult catching something, some of these juveniles will come running towards the adult and try and beg for it, when, even when they're a little bit older, and the adults eventually lose patience and will run off and just eat it, and soon the juvenile then learns that it needs to do its own thing and find its own food, which is what it's doing now. But what you will notice with these guys is they are pure sight hunters. They have a massive eye that they're able to see what's going on. And so you'll often see them cock their head slightly to the side as they look at things. So big, beautiful eyes and long eyelashes to protect those eyes when they're walking through the grass so that they don't get little bits of debris and grass seeds and varying other things inside the eyes themselves. So they'll use those eyes. Look, there we go. See, tilting the head slightly. And then they'll spear down with that massive beak. Anna Marie, you're asking what animals are most dangerous to ground hornbills. Well, big adults like this, I would imagine things like a leopard would be very dangerous to them. I know that there has been reports of martial eagles, so we saw a martial eagle last night. Martial eagles going after our ground hornbills. Um, so those two would probably be the biggest threats as adults. But as chicks, which is where most of the mortality is within ground hornbills, you'll find that the chicks are hunted by various predators. So what happens with ground hornbills is often they make their nest in a poor area so they'll choose a big tree with a big hole so the adult can get in and out but the problem with that is that so can a lot of other animals so there's snakes that get to the chicks there are genets, civets, leopard even lions to a degree will be able to climb up and get into a nest and be able to grab those chicks so that's their sort of biggest problem is, is all of those predators that are able to get to the chicks as adults I would say probably the only thing would be a leopard or potentially a martial eagle other than that, i haven't heard of too many things that actually hunt adult ground hornbills and it's quite an interesting one i know that I've, I've once seen a cheetah chase a ground hornbill but it was unsuccessful the ground hornbill managed to fly before the cheetah got close but otherwise there's very few predators of the adult birds i suppose if we had to think of adult birds it would actually be us as humans that are probably the number one and not because we hunt them but because we destroy their habitat and that's why unfortunately they don't survive and outside of these bush areas very few ground hornbills left but they're just drifting now further southwards into the long grass so i'm going to leave them there and let them carry on with their day